The name O.J. Simpson evokes strong emotions due to his alleged involvement in his wife's murder, overshadowing his NFL fame. His personal life, marked by legal troubles and public scrutiny, has impacted his children, notably daughter Sydney. Her actions speak volumes about her feelings towards O.J., revealing shocking truths that continue to haunt him through the eyes of his own children. To understand the revelations, we must first delve into the context. Who is O.J. Simpson? O.J. Simpson, whose full name is Orenthal James Simpson, is a former American football running back, broadcaster, actor, and convicted felon. Born on July 9, 1947, in San Francisco, California, Simpson played college football at the University of Southern California, USC, where he won the Heisman Trophy in 1968. He was drafted by the Buffalo Bills in 1969 and had an illustrious NFL career primarily with the Bills, 1969-1977, and later with the San Francisco 49ers, 1978-1979, becoming one of the most prolific running backs in the history of the sport. After retiring from football, Simpson transitioned to a successful career as a sports broadcaster and actor, appearing in movies like The Naked Gun series and various television shows. However, his post-football life was marred by legal troubles. In 1994-1995, he was tried for the murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman. The highly publicized trial, often referred to as the trial of the century, ended with Simpson being acquitted of the charges in October 1995. In a subsequent civil trial in 1997, Simpson was found liable for the wrongful deaths of Brown and Goldman and was ordered to pay $33.5 million in damages to the families of the victims. In 2007, Simpson was arrested in Las Vegas, Nevada, for his involvement in an armed robbery and kidnapping incident. He was convicted in 2008 and sentenced to 33 years in prison with eligibility for parole after nine years. Simpson was granted parole in 2017 and was released from prison on October 1, 2017. Simpson's life and legal troubles have made him a controversial and polarizing figure in American culture. His trials and tribulations have been the subject of numerous books, documentaries, and TV shows, reflecting his lasting impact on the public consciousness. O.J. Simpson's first marriage was to Marguerite White, his childhood sweetheart from high school. They got married at a young age, had three children, but eventually divorced in 1979 due to O.J.'s busy schedule and growing fame. Following their divorce, O.J. began a two-year affair with Nicole Brown, who later became his second wife. O.J.'s second marriage to Nicole took place in 1985, despite their troubling relationship dynamics. O.J. was controlling and abusive towards Nicole, leading to multiple instances of spousal abuse. Behind the glitz and glamour were some disturbing signs that indicated something was amiss in their marriage. Most obvious was O.J.'s controlling personality as he had a hard time even letting his wife out of sight. It was reported by family and friends that Nicole was cut off from the world while she was married to O.J. This appalling situation probably made it easier to believe the ugly news of O.J. physically abusing his wife on many occasions. Nicole was in the habit of calling the police after O.J. had allegedly assaulted her. According to the police report, during one such instance, Simpson had yelled out, I don't want that woman sleeping in my bed anymore. Despite Nicole's family urging her to reconcile with O.J. for financial benefits, the abuse continued. O.J. was unapologetic about his affairs with other women, including an alleged relationship with Tawny Kitaran while Nicole was pregnant. Rumors also circulated about O.J.'s involvement with Kris Jenner, although the details remain disputed. Nicole faced severe abuse from O.J., with her sister Denise testifying to witnessing violent altercations that resulted in Nicole being thrown out of the house and sustaining injuries. Nicole eventually decided to divorce O.J. in 1992 after enduring years of abuse and infidelity. The turbulent relationships in O.J. Simpson's life, from his failed marriage to Marguerite to his abusive marriage to Nicole, shed light on the darker aspects of his personal life.
Despite his success in the NFL and his celebrity status, OJ's relationships were marked by turmoil and violence. The story of the demise of his marriages reveals a complex and troubling picture of a famous figure whose personal life was far from the glamour often associated with celebrity. Nicole Brown's death occurred after her divorce from OJ Simpson. She found independence as a single mother in a new home with financial stability from the divorce settlement, receiving $433,750 and $10,000 in child support monthly. Despite attempts to reconcile, evidence on Nicole's phone indicated OJ's continued aggressiveness, escalating due to her new relationship. Early signs of OJ's controlling behavior in their marriage had worsened over time. Chris Jenner revealed that Nicole feared for her life, confiding in friends about OJ's potential to harm her. Tragically, OJ did commit the act, as Nicole had feared. Nicole's journey toward her tragic death in 1993 began with a family outing to the premiere of Naked Gun 33 and 1 3rd. Despite seeming to enjoy the evening with her husband OJ and their children, Nicole had been quietly planning to leave OJ for good by May 1994. Her estate agent later revealed that Nicole had expressed feelings of freedom and independence during her house search. On the fateful night of June 12, 1994, neighbors heard a dog barking at Nicole's home and discovered a gruesome scene, Nicole and Ron Goldman had been brutally murdered. Nicole's head had been severed, and Ron had suffered fatal knife wounds. The discovery of the gruesome crime shocked the community. Nicole's daughter, Sydney, left a heart-wrenching message on the family's answering machine, holding on to hope that her mother's death was just a horrible mistake. Despite the disbelief and devastation, Nicole was laid to rest on June 16, 1994, following her tragic and senseless murder. The events leading up to her death revealed a woman who was determined to break free from a tumultuous relationship and embrace a future filled with independence and hope, cut short by a heinous act of violence. The arrest and trial of OJ were highly publicized due to his reputation for hostility and physical abuse. He attempted to flee from the authorities in a high-speed chase, which was broadcasted live and watched by 95 million viewers. O.J. pleaded not guilty to the stabbing deaths of Goldman and Simpson's ex-wife, with his defense team arguing that the evidence had been tampered with to frame him. The trial became a polarizing spectacle, with supporters and opponents divided along racial lines. White Americans believed he was guilty, while African Americans believed he was innocent. After a lengthy trial, O.J. was acquitted of all charges in October 1995, causing mixed emotions among the public. African Americans celebrated the verdict as a victory against a racist system, while white Americans were largely disappointed. The case highlighted the racial divisions within American society and garnered widespread attention. While there were many court proceedings and adjournments before he was ruled innocent, there are some things about the case that still don't make sense. Was O.J. Simpson truly innocent, and now that he's dead, will the victim's families ever get justice? Let's find out. The aftermath of the murders of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman in 1994 led to a series of confusing events that captivated the nation. O.J. Simpson, the former football star and actor, claimed innocence in the midst of mounting evidence against him. The trial that followed was the first high-profile case to be nationally televised, drawing in viewers eager to witness the drama unfold. Simpson had a team of famous lawyers and was ultimately found not guilty in the criminal trial, but later found responsible in a civil trial and ordered to pay $33 million to Goldman's family. However, despite the passage of 30 years, many questions remain unanswered for the public, especially following Simpson's recent passing. The night of the murders, Simpson left for the airport just after the crime occurred and took a flight to Chicago while his ex-wife and her friend lay dead. He returned to Los Angeles the following day and was questioned by police, but not immediately arrested. Some believe his celebrity status may have delayed his arrest as detectives may have treated him with more lenience than a regular suspect. Eventually, Simpson was arrested for days later, causing shock and confusion among the public. 
In a surprising turn of events, Simpson became a fugitive in a highly publicized chase with police while holding a gun to his head. Millions watched as his friend drove him down the freeway, leading to widespread speculation about his guilt despite his later plea of not guilty. In a later interview, Simpson reflected on feeling as though a part of himself had died with his ex-wife, contributing to his erratic behavior during the investigation. The trial was initially set to take place in Santa Monica where the crime occurred, but concerns about bias led to a relocation to downtown Los Angeles. Despite speculation that a mostly black jury was intentionally chosen to sway the verdict, lead prosecutors maintain that the decision was made to keep the trial moving forward efficiently. The practicality of moving the trial to downtown Los Angeles was emphasized as a means to avoid unnecessary delays or complications and to ensure a fair judicial process for all parties involved. The O.J. Simpson trial remains a lasting enigma in American legal history, with unanswered questions and unresolved mysteries continuing to intrigue the public decades later. The trial of O.J. Simpson, led by prosecutors Marsha Clark and Christopher Darden, was criticized for being unfocused and dragging on for over a year. Instead of emphasizing physical evidence, the prosecution initially focused on Simpson's alleged history of domestic violence. This lack of direction led to minor details overshadowing crucial points, with Judge Lance Ito struggling to maintain control. Author Scott Turo noted that the elongated trial could leave the jury with the impression of either overwhelming evidence or desperate prosecution tactics. Throughout the trial, prosecutors were accused of losing sight of their main objectives and getting bogged down in insignificant details, creating frustration among observers. Despite suspicions that Simpson may have had an accomplice, no evidence was found to support this theory. The decision to rely on Mark Furman's testimony backfired when he was caught lying about racist remarks, raising doubts about the integrity of the evidence against Simpson. Furman's refusal to answer questions further damaged the prosecution's case. The prosecution's strategy was further criticized for not presenting their case more directly and efficiently, leading to unnecessary delays and a lack of clarity for the jury. The focus on minor details and the mishandling of key witnesses ultimately hurt the prosecution's chances of convicting Simpson. With a lack of concrete evidence and questionable tactics, the trial became a prime example of a slow and ineffective prosecution process. In conclusion, the O.J. Simpson trial highlighted the importance of a clear and focused prosecution strategy, as well as the need to prioritize key evidence over minor details. The failure to effectively present the case led to doubts about the integrity of the evidence and the credibility of key witnesses. Ultimately, the trial's slow and unfocused nature hindered the prosecution's chances of securing a conviction against Simpson. The trial of O.J. Simpson had a defining moment when prosecutor Christopher Darden had Simpson try on the infamous bloody gloves found at the crime scene and his estate. The gloves didn't fit, leading to a major blunder for the prosecution. The failed demonstration raised doubts about the evidence and gave defense attorney Johnny Cochran a strong closing argument. The case also raised questions about potential evidence planting by Mark Furman and other investigators, with the defense focusing on casting doubt on the physical evidence. Furman's decision to plead the fifth added to speculation of evidence tampering. O.J. Simpson's defense team highlighted the LAPD's history of misconduct, linking it to the possibility of evidence planting. This strategy aimed to convince the jury that Simpson may have been framed for a crime due to distrust of some police officers. The trial became a spectacle, with the glove demonstration being a pivotal moment that backfired on the prosecution and benefited the defense. The case remained shrouded in mystery, with no certainty around the allegations of evidence tampering. The trial's outcome was influenced by the doubt surrounding the evidence, as well as the broader context of police misconduct in Los Angeles. Ultimately, the failed glove demonstration became a turning point in the trial, shaping public opinion and legal strategy in a case that continues to be discussed and debated today. In 2007, O.J. Simpson faced new legal troubles with armed robbery and kidnapping charges in Las Vegas, coinciding with the cancelled release of his controversial book If I Did It. The book delved into a hypothetical account of the murders of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman, 
portraying how Simpson, if guilty, might have committed the crimes. Simpson's arrest overshadowed the book's release and reignited interest in the infamous case. If I Did It detailed the events leading up to the murders on June 12, 1994, with Simpson describing a confrontation that turned violent, resulting in the brutal killings. The book sparked outrage from the victims' families and the public, leading to its eventual publication by the Goldman family with added commentary exposing inconsistencies in Simpson's account. Despite being acquitted in the criminal trial, Simpson was found responsible for the deaths in a subsequent civil trial. The case continues to captivate public interest, prompting discussions about celebrity justice and the limitations of the legal system. The enduring mystery surrounding the case leaves unanswered questions, with the possibility of new evidence or revelations altering perceptions of the events. The saga of O.J. Simpson serves as a reminder of the ongoing quest for truth and justice, particularly for the victims who lost their lives. As new shows and books reignite interest in the case, the public continues to seek answers about that fateful night in 1994. While the full truth may remain elusive, the pursuit of justice and remembrance of the victims stand as important priorities amidst the enduring fascination with the case. During O.J. Simpson's trials, the Browns cared for his children, Justin and Sidney. When O.J. was acquitted, custody was shared, but a battle ensued when O.J. sought full custody. The court ultimately granted O.J. custody, citing lack of evidence of abuse towards the children. Despite this decision, the Browns fought for custody for five years, eventually winning on appeal due to the circumstances of the murder case. However, the children pleaded to stay with their father, leading the Browns to withdraw and relocate with O.J. to Florida. The Browns remained in touch with O.J. out of love for their grandchildren, despite the difficult situation. Brown's sister, Tanya, revealed that they had to maintain composure and treat O.J. respectfully, even though they had mixed feelings about him. In the end, the Browns prioritized the well-being of the children by allowing them to stay with their father, showing a selfless act of love and understanding in a challenging and emotional situation. Speculation surrounding Jason Simpson's potential involvement in Nicole Brown's murder revolves around his troubled history, including mental health issues and a criminal record. Jason had a history of violent behavior and had been arrested multiple times before the murder, with charges including assault and DUI. He struggled with substance abuse and had a documented anger disorder, leading to violent outbursts. Additionally, Jason had displayed violent thoughts in a journal found in his belongings and was known to carry knives similar to the one believed to have been used in the murder. Physical evidence at the crime scene also hinted at Jason's potential connection to the crime. Fibers found did not match those on O.J. Simpson, and a Navy watch cap similar to one Jason frequently wore was found at the scene. Furthermore, a knife resembling the murder weapon was discovered in Jason's possession, along with other sharp tools. Forensic experts noted the similarities between the wounds on the victims and the knives in Jason's collection, indicating a possible link. Witness statements from classmates and evidence of knife training further raised suspicions about Jason's involvement. Despite O.J. Simpson's history of abuse, he lacked the knife skills and knowledge displayed by Jason, making him a more plausible suspect. Additionally, Jason had no alibi after a certain time on the night of the murder, and his strained relationship with the victims could have been a motive. Moreover, O.J. Simpson's decision to hire a criminal defense attorney for his son before any suspicion fell on Jason raised eyebrows. It suggested preemptive measures to protect Jason from potential investigation, indicating a level of awareness about his potential involvement in the crime. Ultimately, while O.J. Simpson was a notorious abuser, evidence pointing to Jason's mental health issues, violent tendencies, collection of potential murder weapons, and lack of alibi make him a compelling suspect in the unresolved case. The police's failure to thoroughly investigate Jason at the time leaves many unanswered questions about his possible role in the tragic event. Sydney Simpson, eight years old when her mother Nicole was murdered and her father accused, believes he was responsible. Living in her father's shadow after the tragic event, 
she tried to avoid media attention but often failed. In 2014, she changed her name to Portia to protect her identity and live normally. This act may have symbolized her quest for independence from her father. Losing her mother, living in his shadow, and keeping a low profile likely took a psychological toll on Sydney. By shunning the spotlight, she retains control over her own narrative. Arnell Simpson, daughter of O.J. Simpson, was affected by her father's legal battles along with her sister Sydney. Arnell defended her father's innocence but clashed with him over her reckless spending and alcoholism. Despite her struggles, Arnell took care of her siblings and testified for her father in his trials. She pleaded for his release and described him as her best friend. Despite trying to move on from the trial's shadow, Arnell's professional life as a fashion show producer and rapper has been impacted. She continues to manage her father's estate and support her brother. Despite the challenges she faced, Arnell remains hopeful for a second chance and stands by her family through thick and thin. Now, it's time to share your own thoughts on the age-old question. Did OJ Simpson do it? Thank you for watching. To support our channel please subscribe.